Hey, what's up, everybody? If you're a fan of fantasy gaming or tabletop gaming or role-playing games, I think you're really going to dig the set of six fantasy doors that we have. We've got six different styles. You can make them out of less than half a sheet of material with eighth-inch material. They come with two different types of bases, a base that allows you to lean it against a wall or a tree, or a base that allows it to stand on its own. And one of the coolest things about this set, I think, is that there aren't any slots in the bottom, so they just edge glue and stand straight up like this, so you don't have to worry about editing anything for slots or tabs, and you can make these as big as you want. It's made for eighth inch material. You can probably make it out of a quarter inch as well if you want, but I think you're really gonna dig these, and I think a lot of your friends will too. So check them out, let me know what you think, and as always, I'd love to see what you make with them. Let me walk you through each one of the six doors. They all go together pretty much the same way. They've all got three layers that are vertical, and then they've got two layers for the bottom part underneath. Here's the one that we're calling the Dwarven door, and it's important to make sure you pay attention to the line colors, so you make sure you do the right thing with each line color. There's gonna be black, which always equals cut, red always equals score, and then if there are any engraved parts, uh, that will be green. So let's walk through this one, this one quickly as an example, and all the other ones will be very similar. So this has got the, the vertical back piece here that has the cut lines and the score lines on them. And then it's gonna have two identical um, door frame pieces that go right on top of each other, that one there, and this one here, just like that to give it some depth. Then you've got the frame that goes around the window, it goes there. You've got the, uh, the two hinges, which I'm not gonna rotate them right now, but they go right there and right there. And then you've got a door pull. Uh, I'll rotate that one real quick. Um, and that one goes right uh, anywhere in this neighborhood. You can just glue it on right there. And then you've got the options for the uh, base pieces. If you want it to be able to lean against a flat wall, then you'll use these two here. They'll just glue right on top of each other like that. And then you'll take that guy. I'll rotate it just visually so you can see this one. And you will just simply uh, glue these pieces vertically onto it right that uh, right like that. And you will align the back of it. I, I don't have that particular one in front of me, but you'll align the back of it here just like this so it hits flat against a wall if you're uh, putting it against the wall there. And then if you're going to use the other one, then all you do is take these two pieces and put them on top of each other just about like that. And then you will glue... Uh, the door vertically right to the middle of that one. And that's what you got going on right here, okay? And all of these, again, work the same way. Let's go over to the el what we're calling the elven door, which is this one right here. I really love this one a lot. Again, you've got the back piece here with the, the red, whoops, with the red score lines. Don't, yeah, don't separate those. Keep those all together. I'll group those so I don't do that again. And, uh, then you put the two frames on top. You're going to figure out the, the rhythm here really quickly. There's the fat uh, frame followed by the more narrow frame on top of it like that. You've got the two doorknobs, which are right there. And then you choose which set of base pieces you want. If you want it to stand on its own, you'll pick those two. If you want it to stand against the wall, you'll pick those two. And then you'll edge glue it vertically. And like I mentioned in the intro, you can resize these, make these as big as you want. And if you want to use quarter inch material, you certainly can. Uh, that's up to you. Let's keep going here. The goblin door, which is uh, this one right here. Once again, you got the same thing. You've got uh, a couple of frames. Uh, this one's upside down just to save a little bit of space. But the one that doesn't have the um, score lines on it will be the one that goes underneath because don't really need to score it when it's underneath there. Put that one there. Put this one here. Then you've got your hinges that go right there and there. You've got your doorknob and the green. You engrave that. We just like that look a little bit um, on here just to make the doorknob uh, be sunk in a little bit around it. So if you engrave the green and then you'll put the doorknob there right in the middle, just like that. And then once again, you've got the two pieces that will be, if you're going to go against the wall, you've got the pieces that go like this, just like that. Or you've got these two pieces that go right on top of each other, just like that. It's intended to be kind of a rugged uh, slab of stone there. And again, you edge glue it down just like you see here. Keep going. Uh, the ogre door, you see the pattern here. This is all going to be the same. You just simply lay the back piece on top of the front piece. Uh, again, like this. The one with the red score lines is the one with it goes on the front. 
I'll rotate these real quick for you here. These will stack on top of each other just like that. All right. And then you've got some, uh, you've got the door uh, top piece that goes just like this right there. You've got two pieces of grass, sprigs of grass that can go on either side. You got the door pull right there. And then once again, like the other ones, if you want to put it up against the wall, this one goes like this. And then if you want it to freestand, it goes like that. And then you edge glue it uh, whichever way you want, either flat against a wall like this or in the center, whichever you prefer. And make sure that you use these photos of, that I'm going to supply with this because it makes it really easy to put together. Two more to go. Here's what I'm going to call unofficially the Hobbit door. Uh, this is the round one. Uh, so you'll put this piece here. You'll put the uh, smaller round piece right here. We can always use this just for a reference if you ever need to know where things go. Okay. So then you've got the frame, uh, the, um, it can technically go either direction. So this one can go just like this. This one will need to turn around. Let me put that down for a second so I can do this with both hands. And uh, this one could go over here. All right. And then there's these two uh, decorative hinge pieces right here and right here. And they will go opposite each other. The flat piece uh, going out just like that. This one will turn around. Let me turn that around real quick for you. And it will go right over here. And then all you've got left are these two um, pillar pieces here and the doorknob. The doorknob goes right inside this uh, circle here, right there. And then these two pillar pieces get painted and stuck right on like that. And then once again, just like all the other ones, you've got the two options for the flat uh, against the wall base or the floating, the free floating one, whichever you prefer. All right, one more to go. I'm calling it the throne room. I love this one. The, again, the green is engraved and it makes all these indented parts here. And I think this one looks so much like a real door when you get a photo on it. It's, it's really cool. You guys see how this one goes. Uh, you've got this gold piece in this particular one that's cut out and you see the uh, patterns underneath it. And then you've got your two door doorknobs and you've got the bases, however you want that to go together. This one's pretty awesome. So that's how you put all six together. Let me know if you have any questions. Oh my gosh, I'd love to see what you guys make with these. Uh, but until then, as always, we'll see you in the next one.